Forgotten. Chapter 8. Historical. Sunny awoke with a yawn and a stretch, with the roof of the tent coming into view. Setting up, she removed the top half of her sleeping bag and rolled onto her hooves, seeing that Izzy was already up. She walked out of her tent and saw Zip and Pip already over by the fire, with Izzy making hay cakes for breakfast. And Hitch was coming out of his one-pony tent and immediately went for the coffee. Aside from what they just needed to prepare breakfast, they had spent the latest part of the night packing up and getting ready to return up to the mountain. While there was undoubtedly more to go over in there, they had already collected just about as much as they could reasonably carry. The gems' combined weight, even when split amongst the five of them, increased the weight of their packs considerably, and the rough forest terrain was nowhere near suitable for the wagon. That and Pip's battery packs were beginning to run low, which meant light sources were becoming quickly finite in there. That smells delicious, thank you. Sunny greeted, as it passed her a plate, and Hitch came over and poured himself a cup of coffee. Don't know about you, Phillies, but I am looking forward to getting back home. Hitch said, sipping the steaming beverage. It's certainly been an enlightening couple of days, that's for sure. Zip agreed. It's a good thing I have those gems to get back to Maritime Bay, otherwise I don't think I'd ever leave. Sunny admitted. Well, you've certainly shown me what's so exciting and adventurous about archaeology and history. Pip told her. Let me know when you got everything ready in that museum, and we'll be first in line. Their breakfast was interrupted by the sound of approaching hoofsteps. Armored hoofsteps? Indeed, their attention was drawn to the north, and a pair of golden armored pegasi, one sky blue and the other mint green, came through the tree line, coming up to their campfire and coming to a halt. The gear on their backs suggested that they were here for a while. Can we help you, sirs? Sunny asked. The guards exchanged curious glances, if but for a moment. Apologies, ma'am. I assume that we were expected. Zim Zephyrwing, detachment from the 5th Zephyr Heights Regiment. My partner, Thunder. Zim said, motioning to the sky blue pegasus. Oh, now I remember you two from... Before? Sunny said, recalling her first time coming to Sefer Heights, and proceeded to excitedly bombard Thunder with questions about Pegasi during the elevator ride up to the castle. Oh yeah, the shield! Izzy enthusiastically added. Zoom gave a curt nod. Yes ma'am, I hope you're doing well. As this forest is within the Zephyr Heights provincial limits, Queen Haven has elected to mark this... tree, and the surrounding area as a site of historical significance. We are the first of four rotating shifts that will keep watch over it around the clock, until a suitable traveling path can be made through the forest. Surprise! Pip told Sunny. I know that you were a little nervous about me posting my videos about this place, so I asked Mom what we could do to keep an eye on it. Sunny smiled at her friend. That's really awesome. Thank you so much, Pip. That does put my mind at ease a little. I hope we're not going to crowd you, Thunder said. No worries. We're just about ready to break camp. We'll be out of your mains in about an hour. Hitch told them, as they went to unload their gear in the next closest clearing. I don't know about all of you. As he began, finishing off her hay cakes. But when I get back up there, I have an appointment on the dungeon. Izzy, have you ever thought of, oh, I don't know, an actual spa? Zip asked. Is the dungeon still free? My pick dungeon. Chapter 9, Dedication. Two days later... Sunny Star Scout had started her little expedition in the early afternoon. It had been about a half a day's trip to Zephyr Heights when she spent the night with Zip and Pip. After that, it was another half day's trip to get safely down the mountain into the forest. And once she had found it, it was a day and a half of exploring and camping, which ended with Queen Haven sending down a detachment of guards to keep their ruins safe and undisturbed. Then it was a hike back up the mountain and an evening spent relaxing in Zephyr Heights, before leaving for Maritime Bay the next morning. As she moved through downtown Maritime Bay at a healthy trot, taking in the sights and sounds of her hometown for the first time in nearly a week, needless to say, she was happy to be home. She still felt pride well up in her chest every time she saw a unicorn or a pegasus on the streets, and during the tourism that their city had to offer. Admittedly, she hadn't seen a whole lot of sprout around, but maybe that was for the best. She had to assume that there was a decent portion of the town that was none too pleased with him right now. She made a right turn before the main drag towards Candlelogic, towards the old structures of the downtown area, and went down the third building on the right. The Maritime Bay Museum of History. The Earth Mare stepped up to the front door, where a sign hung on the other side of the glass. The Maritime Bay Museum of History is currently closed for remodeling and renovations. We are very excited to welcome you later in the year when the rest of Equestria has finished sharing their treasures of the past with us, and we with them. Thank you very much for your understanding. Sunny dug into her saddlebag and came out with a silver key, which she placed into the lock, turned once and pulled the door open, making sure to reset the lock before removing her key. Mr. Cinnamon! I'm here! She called, her hooves echoing off the vast empty lobby. Various glass display cases lined the outer walls, as well as spaced evenly throughout the rest of the room, creating rows and aisles for patrons to filter through. Half of them were currently empty and open, awaiting new items. Like most of the businesses of Maritime Bay, the town's Museum of History was undergoing something of a culture shock. 
What was once hall after hall containing relics of solely Earth Pony origins, as well as Unicorn and Pegasus relics with completely falsified backgrounds, the elderly owner of the museum, Mystic Cinnamon, had reached out to historians in both Bridalwood and Zephyr Heights. He offered to share his collection with them, so that each and every establishment could enrich and diversify their histories. Understandably, it had thrown more than a couple of wrenches in her operating hours, as the logistics were figured out over the coming weeks. Oh, there you are, Miss Star Scout, just in time. Mystic Cinnamon greeted his new employee. He was a light gray elderly stallion with neatly combed white hair, and his dark purple framed glasses matched his eyes. I'm guessing the gems are ready for me to take over to Counter Logic, boss? She asked. No, Miss Star Scout, what if I told you? I am the owner of this place, but I do not consider myself your boss. We are each students of history, you and I. He corrected her in a firm but friendly tone. Sorry, Mr. Cinnamon. She apologized. To answer your question, yes, I've selected three of the gems that you've brought me, which images I believe to have been sufficiently copied and backed up. But even so, please tell Miss Cloverleaf to take great care with them. But first, I'd like to show you something. We've been busy while you were away gathering those relics at that old castle. Sunny followed him down the hall and her eyes widened when she saw what he had done in her absence. The entrance to the left third of the building had been completely redone. Above the wide open entry was now the six-pointed star, with a lettering, Guardians of Harmony Wing, expertly carved into the polished wood below. On the right side of the entry arc, a table had been placed temporarily, with two polished oak boxes, one a bit larger than the other. The larger box contains the gems, but that's not all. Please come here and close your eyes, the elder pony requested. Sunny did as she was asked and stepped up towards the right side of the entry arch, where something had been mounted to the wall and concealed with a cloth. He directed her to stand in front of it, and then she closed her eyes. He then silently lifted the cloth away. Hands open. Sunny slowly opened her eyes, and her breath was immediately taken away as she saw the oak and gold plaque on the wall. Guardians of Harmony Wing. This wing of Maritime Bay Museum of History is dedicated to the memory of Argyle Starshine, who never stopped reaching a hoof out in friendship when a surrounding society would not. Sunny felt her throat tighten as she raised her right hoof and softly touched the photo. I... I don't know what to say, she said, struggling to fight back tears in the corners of her eyes. Well, I do, Mystic began. I'm a stallion who's recently entered my twilight years, and I have no qualms about admitting that I, like most of us, have spent the vast majority of my life in the wrong. Argyle had a better heart than all of us. I'm honored, Sunny said, swallowing her tears again. No, Mystic countered. The honor is mine. To share the care of this museum with the daughter of the most kind, selfless pony I have ever known. Mystic Cinnamon took the smaller of the two hinged oak boxes and presented it to Sunny. Your tenacity and integrity in the face of the adversity that this town showed you time and again has done nothing less than humble me, Miss Star Scout. The honor is mine. Sunny took the box from his hooves and opened it, and this time she couldn't stop the tears from spilling over as she gazed down at the symbol golden name tag within. Sunny Star Scout. Curator. Sunny bit her lip and wiped away her tears. I won't let you down, Mr. Cinnamon, she said, her voice shaking. I know you won't. You never have to. Now, get these over to Miss Cloverleaf and see what she can do. Sunny sniffled and wiped the last of her tears away, as she was handed the larger oak box, which she tucked carefully into her saddlebag, along with the smaller box that contained her new name tag. After that, she headed out of the museum and towards Canner Logic. Chapter 10 Projections if Sunny was completely honest with herself, she wasn't quite used to being able to just waltz right into Canner Logic through the front gates yet, after being thrown out and banned so many times. But this time, security recognized her, and led her on right through with a level 3 visitor's pass. Even though the annual show was 11 months out, the Canner Logic factory was as lively as ever. She had been here enough times to know to stay behind the yellow and black lines and to keep an eye out for forklifts, as she made her way towards Phyllis Cloverleaf's office, which overlooked the entire production floor. Cutting off to the side, she made her way past three idling forklifts and climbed the iron stairs up to the wide-windowed manager's office. She knocked a couple of times and her hoof was on the doorknob, just as she heard, Come in, come in! She then turned the knob and pushed the door open, being greeted by the smiling face of Phyllis Cloverleaf. Sunny, oh how have you been, sweetheart? Phyllis welcomed, getting up from her desk and walking around to give her visitor a hug, as the door swung closed, greatly muffling the hustle and bustle noises of the production floor. I can't complain. I hear the permits to fix up the lighthouse are being approved any day now. And I'm very proud to say that just this morning, I've got our first unicorn applicant. Phyllis stated proudly. Really? That's fantastic! 
Sunny replied. So, how was your trip? She asked, leading her guest over to one of the cushioned chairs on the opposite side of the desk. Uh, protective. That's actually why I'm here. Sunny answered, reaching into her saddlebag, coming out with the oak box, placing it gently on her desk and sliding it towards her. The factory director opened the box and her eyes widened at the three glimmering gems resting securely in the box. Topaz, cyan, and rose quartz. Oh my, what have we got here? She asked. Look closely, there's an image embedded in each one, Sunny told her. Phyllis adjusted her glasses and leaned in towards the box. As she crossed the specific angle, she saw the image of a small purple dragon helping put together some kind of broken statue in a ballroom. That was from the gem on the right, and her eyes widened in surprise. She then looked over to the one in the middle, and saw the same dragon along with four ponies on a boat with a large sea creature in the background. Lastly, she looked at the one on the left of the case. It seemed to be a... sporting field of some kind. It was a cheerleading squad, and some of the cheer squad were not ponies. Incredible. Was this how they took pictures back then? Phyllis asked, looking back up at Sunny. I don't think they're photographs. I think they're memories enchanted into the individual gems. We got 220 of them, and each one is unique. So please treat them with the almost care. Sunny replied, and Phyllis nodded in understanding. Absolutely. But what would you like me to do with them? She asked. In order to keep the gems and the memories inside them as safe as possible for an untold number of museum patrons, I'm wondering if you could design a projector of sorts to display the image contained in the gem up on a wall display or a screen? Phyllis took her words to heart before looking back down at the gems in question, putting a huff to her chin and thought. Hmm, I can give Facet down on Seaside Drive a call. In order to be absolutely safe, I think it will be best if we start with replicas that can take a few dings. Sonny, I'll get R&D started on this right away, and we'll give it our absolute best shot. I'll let you know as soon as we have something concrete. Sonny smiled at her. Thank you so much, Phyllis. So, um... So, how's Sprout? The mother's face became a bit more somber at the question. Oh, well... Well, he's trying. He really is. I've got to give him that. I realize it's going to take him a very long time to make up for what he did, and I think that he realizes it too. I just hope that he's prepared for how long it might take. She said, as she softly closed the oak case containing the gems. As long as he's giving genuine effort, I hope he's treated fairly. Well, I won't take up any more of your time, Miss Cloverleaf. Thank you again. This is going above and beyond simply searching old ruins for ancient artifacts and whatnot. And the author's doing it in such an interesting way. Now let's head on over to our very interesting donators. Top donators Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Roland, Crazy Glare 557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Library, Chris, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Hadge, Runeslet the 9852, Madman Stan, Leslie Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Hansa Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hud Zaza, and many more fabulous people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.